Okay guys, here is your promised video on the topic 8C through D worksheet, the real one. So I'm just gonna go through the first three pages. I'm not gonna go through the back one. Um, for regular, you need to be able to do everything from one to six. For honors, you need to do everything from one to 10. Um, but I'm just gonna get through one through six in this video. And then if you want to go and look at the key for seven through 10, you can. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Here's our key. Um, so we decided to go back and start talking about um, proofs from the beginning. And so we said, what is the purpose of the proof? A purpose of a proof is to arrive at new conclusions using previously established statements. And the ones that we have are definitions, we have properties, we have postulates, and we have previously proved theorems. So before we can use a theorem, we have to prove it. Remember, a definition is like a statement about what something means. Um, a property is normally an algebraic property, property, and a postulate is a geometric rule that we're telling you is true. Um, a theorem is normally a geometric statement that we have to prove or a rule that we need to prove to be true before we can use it. And so in our um, last unit, we started with the linear pair postulate, and we used it, and we can use it with other known properties to prove the vertical angles theorem. Well, notice this is a theorem, so we need to prove it before we can use it in other proofs. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to prove the vertical angles theorem. So it says, given that these two lines are straight, prove that angle one is congruent to angle three. So there's my given information, and you should all be able to get this first one right on any quiz or test. It says angle one, sorry, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. Well, because we know this is a straight line, we know that these two angles have to add up to 180 because of the linear pair postulate. So the linear pair postulate. And from now on in this video, I'm gonna use LPP. If your teacher doesn't let you use that, don't use it. But in my class, if you want to use LPP, that's fine. Okay, now we have that angle 2, the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 adds up to 180. So before we started with this line, we said these two add up to 180. Now we're saying if we look at this line, these two things add up to 180. That's also going to be my linear pair postulate. Well, remember, my goal is to prove the vertical angles theorem, which says... Um, that these two angles, which are vertical angles, need to add, or sorry, need to be congruent. They need to be the same. So we're trying to figure out how to prove that. And now I have a statement that has angle one and angle three. So this one has angle one. This one has angle three. I need to see if I can find a way to combine these things. Well, you'll notice I can make a train. And what I mean by that is, we know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. And we know that 180 equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. Well, whenever I can make that train, I can cross off the thing in the middle and I can say that this first thing is equal to this last thing. So like what we were saying before, so we had this thing here equals 180. This thing here also equals 180. So we need these two things. These two things are equal to each other. So that's what this is right here. Whenever we can make that train, we have the transitive property. And it's a property of equality because we have an equal sign right here. If this were a congruent sign, it would be a property of congruence, equal sign property of equality. Okay, let's keep going. We need to get to a statement with just angle one and angle three. If you look here, you'll notice that the measure of angle two is on both sides of the equal sign, which means I can subtract it to get rid of it. And when I do that, I end up with the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. I just subtract it on both sides. That's my subtraction property of equality. Okay, we're getting close. We need to show that our two angles are congruent. I have now that their measures are equal. So what I can do is I can use the definition of congruence, which says if two angles measures are equal, by definition, they are congruent. We could also have done it backwards. If this were first, we could have said because these two angles are congruent, by definition, we can say that their measures are gonna be equal. So that's that. So what we just did is we proved that vertical angles are gonna be congruent as long as we have two straight intersecting lines. Um, so now that we've proven the vertical angles theorem, we can use it as a reason in one of our new proofs. So, it's exactly what I just said here. So what postulates and established theorems do we have now that we can use? We can use the linear pair postulate. We can use the vertical angles theorem. Okay, now we're in a new unit. We do have some new postulates and our first one is the corresponding angles postulate. 
I don't want to spend talking about time talking about why corresponding is the only one that's a postulate, but what you do need to know is that since corresponding is the one that's a postulate, it's the only one we can use at the beginning of our unit without having proved it. We get to use it, we accept it without proof. That's what it means to be a postulate. We also have our converse of the corresponding angles postulate. And let me remind you of a couple things. The corresponding angles postulate tells us that if our lines are parallel, remember those two lines up and down mean parallel, then, I should have just used a comma, not a colon, that's okay. Then, corresponding angles are gonna be congruent. That's what this thing says. This one says, if my corresponding angles are congruent, then my lines are parallel. Let's think about it. This says if my lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. We know that. That's our rule. So if the lines are parallel, our rule works. The converse literally means from our logic unit to change the order. So if my corresponding angles are congruent, that's the, the back half, then we can say the first thing, then my lines are parallel. We use the converse to prove that lines are parallel. Okay, so these are our four postulates with our one established theorem, sorry, three postulates with one established theorem. We're gonna use these four things along with properties and definitions to prove all of these new theorems from this unit. Remember, everything from this column is following the pattern of if my lines are parallel, then my rule works. This column is following if the rule works, then and I'm running out of room, then my lines are parallel. Okay, so let's flip to the next page. So now we're gonna actually start proving things. So it says proving the alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay, so if we're gonna prove it, the things that we can use so far are the linear pair postulate, we can use the vertical angles theorem, we can use the corresponding angles postulate, the converse doesn't help us. Our lines are already parallel. We only use the converse when we're proving lines are parallel. We're already given that our lines are parallel. And then of course we can use definitions and we can use properties. So let's see if we can do that. So this says um, we have that A is parallel to B. That was given information. We need to find a way to prove that two and eight are congruent using only these three things. So I like to start with the first angle we're given. We're at two. I need to find a way to get through eight. Well, my only option is to move through a linear pair, which gets me to three or to one, vertical angles, which gets me to four, or corresponding angles. This is the only one that lets me jump from this intersection to this section because my lines are parallel. So let's do that first big jump of getting from two to six. And we can say that two is congruent to six because of the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, well we need to keep getting from six to um, from two to eight and we can get from six to eight because those are vertical angles, the vertical angles theorem. Well we need to find a way to get from two to eight in one step and you'll notice we have that angle two is congruent to angle six and angle six is also congruent to angle eight. So we could make that train and we can say, okay, if two is the same as six and six is the same as eight, then two and eight also have to be the same. When we can make that train, that's our transitive property. And this is a property of congruence because of that congruent sign. So I've just proven using only these things that alternate exterior angles um, are gonna be congruent if the lines are parallel. That's my alternate exterior angles theorem. Let's do another one. Once again, I have that my lines are parallel. I want to prove that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So I have that my lines are parallel, and you can see it's already marked in the picture for you. Let's start with three. My goal is to get to six, but my only way that I can jump intersections using this list here is to jump all the way down to seven. So I can get from three to seven using the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, well I can get from seven up to six because seven and six together form a linear pair. So the measure of angle six plus the measure of angle seven equals 180, that's this one right here. So you might be thinking, what's this step in between? Well, let's take a look. I wanna combine these two statements to get to the bottom one. 
But the problem is, is this has a congruent sign, this has an equal sign. So I need to find a way to deal with that. So what I can do is I can say, okay, whenever I have a congruent sign, saying my angles are congruent, and I turn it into an equal sign, saying their measures are equal, that's my definition of congruence. It lets me switch back and forth. Okay, well now we're getting really close. If you look at this statement, and you look at this statement, you'll notice the only difference is that has the measure of angle 7, that has the measure of angle 3. So why can I make that change? Well, if you look here, you'll notice we know that angle 3 and angle 7 have the same measures, which means I can substitute one of them in for the other. Just like in a football game, if you have a quarterback that needs to come out, you need to substitute them with another quarterback, something that's equivalent. Since these have the same value, I can put 3 in for 7. So um, I'm substituting, so that's my substitution property. Um, this is one of the only ones that's not a property of equality or congruence, just a property. Um, so if you notice, for transitive property, it's normally when we're changing a whole side. So this whole side equals this whole side, and that is also equal to this whole side. Here we're just changing one thing on one of the sides. We're substituting a term or a value in for a term. So that's this one. So now we've proven, using just the linear pair postulate, vertical angles, same and corresponding angles with some definitions and properties, that angle 3 and angle 6 are going to be supplementary as long as my lines are parallel. So what I want you to do now is try number... Five, it's very similar. You're just proving the same side exterior angles theorem. Use number two to help you if you're stuck. There's going to be a key, but I want you to try to do this by yourself. So for honors, remember, you need to be able to do both sides by yourself. For regular, we're going to give you some of these statements, if not all of them, but you need to fill in the reason. So if you look at the um, key on Blackboard, you can either check for just the statements or do the whole thing at once. Okay? But we're going to keep going. It's time now to prove the converse of the same side interior angles theorem, or the converse ones. Remember, the purpose of this word converse, we use the converse when we're proving things are parallel. Notice, we're given something, we're proving that our lines are parallel. So let's make a list of what we can use. We can use the linear pair postulate. We can use the vertical angles theorem. We can't use the corresponding angles postulate. In order to use the corresponding angles postulate, we have to already know that our lines are parallel. So this one is no good now. But we do have the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. And that one tells us that if my corresponding angles are congruent, I can conclude that my lines are parallel. So then, of course, we also have our definitions and our properties. So let's see if we can prove that um, our lines are parallel using just these things. So we're starting with the fact that 4 and 6 are supplementary. So let's add that here. We know this is because it's given to us. Well, remember, the only way we can go backwards to prove that lines are parallel right now is using this converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So I want to see if I can find a pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. So I already have this that was given to me. I can say that 2 and 4 go together because they form a linear pair. So that's my linear pair postulate. They're supplementary. They add up to their measures add up to 180. Okay, I can get from four um, from 6 to 2. I have these statements, but I need to combine them so I just have a statement with 2 and 6. So I can start by using my transitive property that says, okay, since 180 equals this and 180 also equals this, these two things have to be the same. That's how we got here. That's my transitive property of equality is an equal sign. Remember, I just want 6 and 2 together, so there's a measure of angle 4 on both sides. We're going to subtract it. Okay. Now I'm left with the measure of angle 6 is equal to the measure of angle 2. Well, before I can say my lines are parallel, I need to know that my corresponding angles are congruent. If their measures are equal, we know by definition that their angles are congruent, or the angles are congruent. That's my definition of congruence. Okay, well here we go. The converse of the corresponding angles postulate says if we have a pair of uh, corresponding angles that are congruent, there's 6, there's